Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. In this session, we are going to discuss about the quality control test for soft gelatin capsules. The quality control test for the soft gelatin capsules basically comprises of two parts. First comes into the category of the physical test, second chemical test. So when we talk about the physical test, they, there are two types of the tests we perform for soft gelatin capsules. The first is the disintegration test and second is the weight variation test. In the chemical test category, we need to conduct five tests which are dissolution test, assay, content uniformity, stability testing and moisture permeation test. So let us try to discuss these tests one by one. One can understand when we try to evaluate the soft gelatin capsules, we need to check 12 things. The first is the shell integrity, the capsules gelatin shell outer integrity test, uh, how in how much time it is disintegrating and second is the uh, content uniformity test and the dissolution test for the content of the capsule gelatin and in play which is being encapsulated material which is being placed inside the capsule so there are two parameters two evaluation tests basically first comprising of the outer shell and second of the encapsulated mass so when we first try to analyze the evaluation of the soft gelatin capsules we need to look ahead for the appearance test for example the shape analysis size analysis thickness and the color of the soft gelatin capsules. Each and every capsule, whether it belongs to hard gelatin shells or to the soft gelatin capsule cells, basically have to pass through these all, all these tests in order to comply with the regulatory requirements. So if uh, we need to perform the all these tests on every batches to ensure that whatever product we have manufactured, the kind of the capsules we have obtained after the manufacturing process, it is as per the requirements. So let us first start with the weight variation test. These all tests are basically uh, the same test that we carry out for the evaluation of the tablets. They have been modified little bit to ensure that we are actually checking the shell strength as well. So like in the case of soft gelatin capsule, we have a gelatin shell which needs to be broken down first and then uh, the encapsulated mass will come out. So this uh, the procedure more or less belongs to like that of the tablets only. So when we talk about the tablet uh, uh, soft gelatin capsules weight variation test, initially we take the 10 gelatin capsules. Then uh, these capsules are being cut out open and the contents are being removed out and then they are washed with a suitable solvent. Since all the soft gelatin capsules comprises of the liquid uh, encapsulated mass, therefore there is a need to actually perform this step. This is totally different from the tablet step. The solvent which is being allowed to evaporate at room temperature over a period of 30 minutes, which is being followed by the weighing of the individual wash shell. So this step is being added upon for the soft gelatin capsule and this is the difference in for the weight variation test. So that in this step, we actually allow the solvent to uh, evaporate first because we need to analyze the shell, we need to analyze the encapsulated mass. So for that we need to understand that the excess solvent which has been placed up in the soft gelatin that has to be removed out. Then once it has been removed out the net contents are calculated by and the content of the active ingredient in each of the capsules can be determined by the calculation which is based on the percent drug content in the formulation. Now it is very important to note here is that the fill weight variation of the capsules is basically a function of the equipment setup and the filling operation. So like in the tablets, we need the precise tablet weight. Hereby also we need to ensure that the encapsulated mass is within the range. So an automated capsule sizing machine or a weight checker is frequently used to discard over or under filled capsules. The specifications remains that same of that of the tablets. Next, we move on to the disintegration test. Since we are evaluating the soft gelatin capsules, we have to ensure that the drug substance is fully available for the dissolution and the absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. So again, we place single uh, soft gelatin capsules into the uh, disintegration apparatus. The capsules are placed in the basket rack assembly, which is repeatedly lowered 30 times per minute. You have to mention these timelines in a thermostatically controlled bath. 
of fluid at 37 degrees Celsius. So you please note down the time 37 degrees Celsius and it has been it has to be lowered 30 times and the graph is being observed uh, as per the individual monograph. So whatever specifications have been prescribed for the disintegration have to be checked from the individual drug monograph. So, to fully satisfy the test, the capsule should disintegrate completely into a soft mass with no firm coat and only some fragments of the capsule shell. This is very important to understand that the capsule should completely break down and it should get converted into a soft mass and it should ha have no firm coat and some fragments are being allowed of which can be of the capsule shells. The disintegration test also determines whether the capsules get disintegrated within the prescribed time. And what is the prescribed time that we need to check for the individual monograph specified in the pharmacopoeias. So, when it is placed, it should uh, disintegrate within the specified time period. So, uh, the process remains the same. You have to insert one soft gelatin capsule shells into each of the test tubes, six test tubes and at 37 degrees Celsius and 30 minutes is being allowed. So, 30 times up and down movement and the, uh, it is a basket rack assembly. The capsule is supposed to pass the test if no residue remains on the screen of the apparatus or if the residue remains, it consists of only fragment shells. So, this, these are the broken parts of the shells which are being allowed if a soft mass with no palpable core. So, core should not be hard. It should be very soft mass is permissible. If the disc is used, any residue remaining on its lower surface should only consist of fragments of the shell. So, like in tablet, it should get complete disintegrated but in the case of uh, soft gelatin shells the uh, fragments of the shells are being allowed uh, and only uh, the, it should not carry any firm coat so this these if, if that mass remains that is not a problem this is being allowed as per pharmacopoeia you can see the assembly like here we have the test sample placed between a basket rack assembly and uh, we have the dissolution medium we have the compression probe being controlled. So, this is the uh, setup for the dissolution apparatus. Next, we move on to the dissolution. So, the compendial, compendial or pharmacopoeial dissolution test for the capsules uses the same apparatus, dissolution medium and test as that used for uncoated and plain coated tablet. Now, this is very important. So, whatever individual monograph for the drug substance is prescribed as per the pharmacopoeia, the compendial requirements for the dissolution test remains the same. You have to use the same apparatus, you have to use the same dissolution medium and you have to use uh, as a test uh, and the uh, limits which are being prescribed for the uncoated and the plain coated tablets are to be considered. However, in certain instances in which the capsule shells interfere with the analysis, the contents of a specified number of capsules can be removed and the empty capsule shells dissolved in the dissolution medium before proceeding with the sampling and the chemical analysis. Now, here an exception is being provided out. It, it simply says that if it is being found that the gelatin shells interfere with the analysis, in that case, one can take the method as following. They can remove off the content from the shells and the shells are then being dissolved in the dissolution medium before proceeding with the sampling and chemical analysis. Now, if the capsule floats on the surface of the dissolution fluid, a small loose piece of non-reactive material such as a few turns of the wire helix may be attached to the dosage form. It simply says if your soft gelatin capsule starts floating on the dissolution medium, in that case you can tie up with a wire and so that it remains embedded into the dissolution apparatus and it should uh, it should not float on the top. This is not permissible. So, while carrying out the dissolution study, it has to be ensured that the soft gelatin capsules remain suspended inside the dissolution medium. The dissolution test is carried out as per the specifications of the both USP and the IP. The capsule is simply placed in a basket apparatus and the basket is immersed in the dissolution medium which is caused to rotate at a specified 
speed the dissolution medium again is held in a covered 1000 ml glass vessel maintained at 37 degrees celsius by means of a constant temperatures and with a suitable bath arrangement the stirring speed and other other parameters like the type of the dissolution medium are specified in the individual monograph so it is very important to know and understand here is that for the soft gelatin capsules also for the disintegration apparatus and for the dissolution medium we are actually following the same protocol the same procedures as specified in the individual monograph now and the same interpretation which we carry out for the tablets have to be interpreted here also again six capsules are initially tested and are accepted if each one of them is not having the specified then the 5% so amount of the dissolution the percentage of the drug release plus 5% so if each of them is not less than the monograph specified that is p plus 5% if it fails then another six lot has to be taken out then the average of 12 capsule average of the 12 capsule should be greater than or equal to 2 p and none of them should be less than p minus 15% so if, if if this criteria is also not fulfilled in that case if the capsule still fails the test then additional set of 12 capsules have to be taken out and they are considered to be accepted if the average of 24 is greater than p that that is the limit specified in the pharmacopeia and if not more than 2 less than p minus 15 and none of them is less than p minus 25 so again it is very simple you have to take an additional 12 capsules and the, the sum of all the 24 should not should be greater than p if it is less than p only two are permissible and if it is less than 25% only one is permissible so you can understand my dear students the criteria of the interpretation remains the same as that of the plain uncoated tablets for the dissolution so the, uh, when we try to understand the dissolution from the soft gelatin capsules or the hard gelatin capsule it is has been found that it is a function of it is dependent on the dissolution rate of the shell how much hard is the shell what is the plasticizer content uh, it it actually depends on the integrity of the shell because it has to be understood very clearly that the shell has to be broken down fast so that the encapsulated mass can come into the contact with the gastrointestinal fluid so again the rate of penetration of the solution medium the rate of deaggregation of the powder mass or and the nature of the primary drug substance determine the rate of dissolution so normally the shell ruptures and dissolves within about 4 minutes the rupture occurs first at the shoulders where the shell wall is the thinnest so and falls apart as liquid penetrates and deaggregation occurs so this is the process how the shell breaks down and formulation tend to spill out of the two ends now let us uh, focus again on the content uniformity for this that as like in the case of the tablets we take the 10 capsules are being taken out and then they are subjected to assay so out of the 10 capsules nine of the 10 capsules should be in the range of plus minus 15% that is the content should lie within 85 to 115% this much sort of the variation is being allowed and 10th capsule should be within the range of plus minus 15% range if it uh, if it is being found that nine capsules are in this range plus minus 15 only only one is going out of the range in that case we take another 20 capsules and then they are being assayed down further that that is the content is being determined and all of the 30 capsules should be within the range of plus minus 25% so no capsule should go out of the range of 75 to 125% this is the same criteria which is being used for the content uniformity for the tab let's as well next is this is a specific test which is used for the evaluation of soft gelatin mass this is known as the moisture permeation test my dear students you can understand that the soft gelatin capsule shells have a uh, have a challenged physical test in the way that the shells are susceptible for the absorption of the moisture from the encapsulated mass they can take and absorb the moisture from the encapsulated mass and when may become porous or soft or other hand they can also like uh, they can also go dry 
uh, if the external moisture con uh, the, uh, conditions are like that they can also get dried up fast and in that case the moisture uh, due to the loss of the moisture the softer uh, the soft gelatin capsule shells become very hard so like in both ways they are the cap the, they have to be maintained at a specific temperature and at a specific humidity condition for the detailed uh, understanding of the concept you can refer my earlier videos so the moisture permission test is a specific test to understand the integrity and the power of the gelatin shells to absorb the moisture specifically so for conducting this test the degree and the rate of the moisture penetration is determined by packaging the dosage unit together with a color revealing desiccant palette now this is very important you are packing up the dosage unit with a color revealing desiccant palette now the expose the packet unit to a known relative humidity over a specified time then this packet is allowed to remain suspended in a known relative humidity by elevating so observe the desiccant palette for color change now what do we analyze we analyze the color change now what why this color is being changed out due to the uh, high or low humidity conditions there happens the color change so if any sort of the color change is being observed it indicates the absorption of the moisture so in case when it is being exposed to higher humidity conditions or lower humidity condition it has been observed that the color changes so measuring the pre-test weight in by initially weighing and pro-test weight of the pallet amount can be simply calculated what happens is that if any substance absorbs the moisture they gain the weight or if any substance loses the moisture also then they lose the weight so if you weigh initially and after conducting the test the change in the weight will actually tell you the moisture permeation tendency of the soft gelatin capsules thank you so much for watching my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates thank you